All right, hello, and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine, and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today, I am delighted to be joined from Indiana by Andy Gerchek. How are you doing, Andy? John, thank you. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, and Andy is a CEO of All City Adjusting, emigrated to the U.S. at the age of nine, always had a passion for helping and an entrepreneurial spirit, so he started roofing as a teenager, and that's a tough job. Uh, since then, he has found his way into the public adjusting world, helping individuals, families, companies negotiate with insurance companies for higher settlements and claim payouts, and that's what we're going to talk about today is, the, is public adjusting. Um, probably... Uh, a little bit easier than standing on a hot roof in the summer, I would say. Just a little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> Just a little. Uh, all right, Andy. So, I mean, for those who aren't really uh, uh, familiar with with public adjusting and adjusting in general, just give us a brief uh, definition of what it is and what it does. Public adjuster is an advocate for the insured. Well, they're licensed by the state that they work for, uh, that they work in, um, and they're legally uh, licensed to represent the insured, to advocate and negotiate their claim on their behalf and help them through the claims process. Right, so that's something that probably a lot of people aren't familiar with, right? Because I mean, a lot of people think they have to do their own negotiation with the insurance company and they're not really prepared to do that. So um, is the public adjuster always available? Yes, a public adjuster is always available. Most people don't know about them because most, pe most, most people won't have a claim their whole you know their their lifetime of owning a home or right. property uh, or a business. Um, a lot of people that call us, you know, had a claim first time in thirty years, forty years, um, and so we try to educate people and and try to try to let people know that there's someone there out there for you when you do have a claim um, to move that claim and get that claim paid fairly. Mm -hmm. And and I presume uh, insurance companies probably when it when a uh, public adjuster is, gets into the mix probably move things a little quicker, much quicker, uh, much quicker, more more diligent, and then for a much larger settlement. Um, so in all in all, you're in such better place uh, when when all said and done. All right. And what's the connection between uh, what is the uh, what, what's the connection between um, public adjusting and real estate? How is that? How is that impacted? Correct. Well, mo for us, majority of our clients are going to be investors, landlords, uh, mm -hmm. people that own real estate more than one. Um, and that that helps those 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 real estate, uh, those people in real estate usually have their own contractors and have, you know, their teams built. So when we come in, we're there to help uh, negotiate, settle their claims, get them paid, and then they're able to use their own people, their own contractors, instead of relying on the insurance company's vendors to control the claim. Oh, so that's interesting because, yeah, because in the normal way, they'll like, obviously push you towards their per preferred um, people, but you're able to come in and like make it, make it work better for, for the people who are actually affected. Correct. And so instead of, you know, them pushing their vendors and them controlling the entire claim, our clients get the money, get the check, and then they're able to pay whoever they choose to do the work for. Mm -hmm. Right. So what are some of the what are some of the ways that uh, it's advantageous to work with the public adjuster? What are some of the things that you can you know, that you can come uh, obstacles or issues or pitfalls that you might uh, trip over if you do all of this yourself? Correct. Having a public adjuster, again, not only speeds up the claims process, but just from a standpoint where make sure that it actually gets approved and you don't go through all the loophole, you don't have to jump through uh, hoops. Um, because if you start the claim wrong by yourself and use the wrong terminology, you know, just using the wrong terminology can delay the claim, can ultimately deny your claim. So just from a standpoint of having a public adjuster file that claim, prepare that claim, uh, negotiate it and make sure to get the top dollar will again not only save you time, money, but ultimately getting your claim denied and not getting paid at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because let's face it, I mean, that's the thing about insurance is the delays. I mean, it takes, you know, they tend to take an inordinate amount of time. But as you say, if things aren't filled in properly or whatever, it's it never seems to be a very simple fix. It's almost like you go back to the beginning of the queue. Correct. And, and you know, the, the one advice we always probably ask this question, uh, you probably ask this question, mm -hmm. 
this question, uh, one advice or one tip, and I always tell people like, you know, say say the stop saying so much, stop talking to you know the insurance company so much, and stop telling them basically the entire truth of your life story, because mm -hmm. the more you tell them, unfortunately gets your claim delayed it gets a delayed gets it denied so if you can say less is is, is going to save you a lot of headache i mean that's it that's interesting because most people instinctively would think okay well i'm on with the insurance company i need to give as much detail as possible and then people and like you say people get kind of distracted into all these extraneous details but you're saying like the more information you give out you can actually damage your your claim correct and that's just and, and again withholding information mm -hmm. or or, or lying is, is sure. legal, right? Uh, we're not advocating mm -hmm. for that. But when we have a couple that's now their claim is denied because they, you know, told their high life story that the last two months they were selling the house, then they were traveling to another home, then they were living with their son. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, their claim gets denied because they stated that their home that they were selling was not their primary residence somewhere. Uh, right. Even though that's that's where they live, but they moved out to their son's home so they could sell their home, you know, and the and the and the house was clean and free of everything, so they got their claim denied. Mm -hmm. For the fact that if it was reported the right way and it was explained the right way and less stuff was said, that claim would have been paid with no questions. Yeah. Now it's, in the, now it's in the hands, you know, of an attorney. Oh, now it's in the hands of an attorney. Yeah. No, exactly. And you can see how then you suddenly the expense starts to mount up as well, not just the and the headache and the out of pocket expenses, uh, etc. What are some other pitfalls with insurance companies to look out for? Correct. Right now, the right now the 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 whole uh, process of delaying claims. I mean, it's always been that game. The longer they can delay a claim and push it, push it forward, because remember that the company that that actually pays this that owes you money that has to pay this claim puts the burden of proof on you. The burden proof of, is on the insured. So if they come out and they say, hey, we're going to pay you a thousand, you say, well, no, I have a hundred thousand dollars in damage. You mm -hmm. might, but the proof of burden is on you. So you actually have to prove that. So as a, as a PA, we actually have to prove why they're paying for what they're paying, what do they have to pay for and how much. Right. And then it comes same thing with personal property that's lost or uh, loss of business income. That's all on the, the, the the insured or whoever's representing the insured to prove to the insurance company. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I guess that's a, and I guess that's a good, uh, that's a good point because people would assume in some ways that you're paying, that you're a customer, you're paying this insurance company. So therefore the insurance company should be looking out for your, for your interests and not saying that they're, they're not, but they're certainly not going to go out of their way to, to help you. If, uh, as I said, they're not going to make it easy for you. No, that there's, there's, I mean, they, they're there to collect policy mm -hmm. and when it, you know, policy premiums and when it comes to paying claims, unfortunately, they're not, the times have changed. They're not, it, it's getting worse and worse every year. And, and when it comes to, you know, paying claims they, they want to delay it, they want to underpay claims. It, it, they know that the longer they can push someone out, people will accept their, their amounts and mm -hmm. not many people will hire a public adjuster or get an attorney. Yeah. So that, I was going to ask you that. So, uh, are there many public adjusters? I mean, are you? There, is there is there plenty of availability? Is it more, as you, as you said at the beginning, more of a case that people don't realize this is a resource available to them? No, I think I, I think in some states, for example, Florida, Texas, there's a there's a ton. There's always been a lot of public adjusters. Um, that states that always have hurricanes, always have kind right. of some kind of storm damage. So you have more more most PAs in those states just for the fact that people are aware. You know of, of what happens during claims whereas in the midwest or some other states it's not as well known so mm -hmm. it just depends um and then there's other pas that do their you know certain claims some pas for example only ha uh handle maybe smaller claims some you know wind and hail some just do water claims like our company specializes for example in large loss large fire losses water um commercial losses that's kind of been mm -hmm. our Right, right, right. Um, and I guess, I mean, that's obviously when you get into those large ones, those got to be pretty complex negotiations. Correct. But those are what we specialize in. That's kind of how we've built the company with the right people, you know, with our you know senior estimator on the building side, spending 25 years working for the insurance company on the large claims. So we've kind of brought in people and built the team with the, um, that specialize in, that can handle and specialize in these complex kind of claims. And that's a good point you made because, uh, I mean, there's probably some people who think, oh, well, 
my claim would be too small for a public adjuster, adjuster or other people, maybe even like large claims, they don't realize they uh, they exist. But it seems to me that you can you can pretty much find the right adjuster for the right level of of, of claim, right? A hundred percent. And we have calls all the, you know, we get calls all the time where it's, you know, maybe a smaller claim, hey, we had a shed blown off or we had some shingles blown off. Some smaller claims that, for example, we don't handle, you know, we don't handle or we right. can't get through. If there is, we, if we do have some time or we have PAs available, we'll take us, you know, we'll take those claims. Um, but it doesn't hurt to call. The worst we'll tell you is, hey, we can't help you. And mm -hmm. you do have a legit claim and definitely call around and you'll find a PA that can, that can assist you with your claim. Yeah. Um, what and what are some of the uh, mistakes that uh, insured people make about maybe assuming their coverage or thinking that they've got claims? Or how, how do you help people maybe who are a little bit <laughs> off base? Yeah, sometimes it's hard to persuade those people and not to persuade, but like advise them and, and give them mm -hmm. insight of what they're going to go through. A lot of people are very stubborn and say, hey, well, the agent's a friend of mine. He's been with the family for 20 years not knowing that the agent has nothing to do with the claims process. Mm -hmm. He is a salesperson. He sold you a policy. He will he has nothing to do anymore. Um, and those people just get stubborn and, you know, they're they're more worried, you know, oh, well, the insurance will take care of me and everything's going to be fine. I don't need anyone. Great. You know, that's it. Not having someone on your side is like going to, just like going to court without an attorney to represent you. Yeah, yeah. No, I was going to say uh, that that's exactly what it sounds like. I mean, it sounds like trying to always trying to represent yourself, which is probably which is rarely a, a great idea in any in any area. Um, and and so is this uh, is this uh, and and how is this funded? I mean, how do you how do you make money? So our public justice charge a contingency fee, which right. is paid once the claim is settled. Mm -hmm. You know, and that fee ranges from 10, 20, 25 percent, depending on the claim. Uh, when the PA gets involved in the claim, was it right from the beginning? Is it, you know, once the insurance has already been paid out so much money and maybe they think there's some more left for, uh, to recover. Uh, but usually the fee starts at 10%. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, I mean, so, I mean, think of that for, for the amount of, uh, headache free and uh, hassle free interaction. That seems like a pretty good deal. It, it, we charge 30 40 percent our insurance still would be much better in right. the situations we get them and we know what they're against um our fee always starts at 10 percent when we're taking a claim from the beginning uh 10 percent uh just the time and the headache yeah. you save and then the amount of money you'll recover uh and you know an extra in, in different stuff we find the policies and stuff we get for our clients it just pays for itself mm -hmm. it, it's just like a good accountant just again just like any good uh, right uh, that you can have yeah, and, and just tell me a bit about, about uh, insurance in general, because it just seems to be getting more complex at the moment, and it's getting hard. I mean, for instance, like I'm here in California, right, and their insurance companies pulling out of California and refusing to insure people any longer. I know the situations like that in in other states as well. Um, why is it that it, it just seems like the insurance industry is becoming more complicated and even more selective, if you like? Correct. So that that's a funny, that's a hard thing to explain, right? Because you mm -hmm. have uh, insurance companies pulling out of states, but they're reporting the highest, yeah. the highest earnings ever, right? CEOs are getting huge bonuses, yet they're pulling out of states. So it makes you wonder. Yeah, it, it gets more complex. Uh, where the, whether it goes by the state and the laws, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for example, California is, you know, uh, insurance companies have to be very careful in California. Whatever they say. There's a lot of laws against them, a lot of statutes. Mm -hmm. So they're 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 kept at a different standard than, for example, in different states. That's easier to handle claims, yeah. from, right? Right. Um, so, but yeah, every year it gets more complex. Uh, you know, different insurance companies are pulling out. I feel like that opens the door for different carriers to enter the state of California, and they're changing policies more and more to make it more difficult for the insured to recover when something actually happens. I mean, a lot of policies now literally only cover you if you have a fire. So if right. every barrel hits you, you know, good luck. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a, it's a, I mean, that's, it's, it's definitely an issue. And if no, it's, it'll be interesting here to see how that pans out because I do even see people on the next door app about, you know, when their insurance companies aren't insuring them anymore here or whatever. So it's, and that can be quite a shock to people and quite traumatic as well. Correct. I just getting a letter that you're not going to have insurance and then try buying insurance when there's no insurance to, 
there's no one selling insurance and the, and the companies that are selling are charging a high premium. So mm -hmm. now if they're doubling their premium, tripling their premium, especially like in California or in states like Florida, and you know, you're already on middle income and with inflation, everything going up. I mean, you know, five thousand dollar premium going up to ten. Yeah, that's huge. It's a huge jump for someone, and the coverage is, is less. less. So. Yeah. So what is it? Where, where do you where do you see? I mean, you alluded to that a minute ago. Do you see more new innovative kind of insurance companies coming along, or or technologies, or something? Because it seems like an industry that kind of makes up its own rules, but has has stayed pretty, I mean, they're all pretty similar, all the insurance companies. So some insurance companies now are, some of the new insurance companies are just online. Um, there's a, like, for example, there's an insurance company called Lemonade. That's their whole, their whole thing is to be online, no agents, mm -hmm. you know, everything is remote. Um, I think Liberty or Farmers, I don't remember, we just read an article, uh, they're laying off like 11% of their staff. And, you know, they're trying to go, whether it's remote, AI, um, you know, trying to right. move more into technology and let people go, whether it's going to help them or not. I mean, you know, we see it as on, on the claims we see, you know, it's less and less of uh, expertise and, and more and more of there's, you know, they send out people that have no clue what they're doing with no expertise. So the, the, that, that's so it's, it's, you know, from our perspective and looking into the future kind of where the claim process is going, it just seems like it's only going to get worse with insured. Um, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I agree with you because I mean, I think when people are making a claim on their insurance, right, they tend to, it tends to be an emotional time for a start because it's the result of something unforeseen. Um, you have a fire, John, yeah. or you kind of loss, and you know, we have this all the time and an insurance company sends out an adjuster. He shows up to your house a week later and says, Oh wait, this is way out of my ballpark. Like I'm, um, this is large loss. I can't handle this. Yeah. How does that make you feel? Yeah. So then the next guy comes out two weeks later and goes, "Oh shoot, I got twenty of these large losses. I, it's gonna be a while." Yeah, and and that that's why that's why I just don't understand that part because as I said, it's an emotional thing. It's people are, are, are you would think that they would be investing in people because that's what, I mean. You know, you need that expertise if they're going to go the route or they're going the route you talked about with less experienced people and then trying to use technology and stuff. That's going to be an awfully awful customer experience. Being being dealing with large loss uh, like we do, um, you deal with a lot of local adjusters. Now, those are a rare breed now, but, you know, still there's still some around. But it used to be where, you know, the, the adjuster you know lived a couple blocks away and this was his area. He knew, you know, if you had a problem, he was right there. Mm -hmm. He knew the area. He knew everyone. And, you know, those guys are long gone because those guys, you know, those those adjusters, um, you know, we're getting bonuses, we're getting benefits and it's cheaper to let them go and bring in someone for half the price out of school. It's just with the, with the checklist, time. with the checklist, <laughs> it's just, you know, and then they get the checklist of we don't pay for this. We don't do this. Mm -hmm. um, we don't do this. And. And if they want to fight it, they can, you know, do what they want. And yeah, not yeah, no, exactly. And it's and it's when the the poor people who are making the claim, you know, they're at a not a great point in their life, and they have to deal with all this stuff as well. So, um, listen, Andy, this has been great. All Andy's in, uh, information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and your company. Yeah. First of all, again, you guys could thank you for having me, and you guys could sure. find us on our on our website, allcityadjusting.com. Um, you could search my name. Um, you guys could contact us at 844-MY-ADJUSTER. And, and for your listeners, I'll even leave them with my cell phone. If any of your listeners have a question about their policies or any kind of claims, um, they can reach me directly at 708-655-4186. Um, text me, call me. Um, but you guys can find us really much anywhere online. Um, we do a lot of educational stuff for, uh, for people and, and the insured. Perfect. Listen, great. Thank you again, Andy. Thank you for watching and listening. Uh, see you all again very soon. Thank you. Bye.